In this tutorial we're going to show you how we create this hanging towel model using 3D Studio Max, Corona Renderer, Marvelous Designer and ZBrush. When we create our scenes we try to use as much 3D as possible to save time on post-processing and this also means we can reuse models in any environment from any angle. We'll also include the reference images that we used of real life towels for you to study. References are really useful to identify the imperfections and subtle variations that your 3D should replicate. We'll be simulating the towel in Marvelous Designer to achieve more natural looking shapes and forms, which would be difficult to achieve sculpting in 3D by hand. Before we simulate, we must create an avatar, which is a mesh that will be used in Marvelous Designer as a rigid collision mesh, in this case, the towel ring. To create the ring, we simply create a 170mm torus with 36 sides and a thickness of 10mm. Rotate and move it into position. It's important to note that the towel ring has to have enough resolution so that the mesh doesn't fall through it when we simulate. Now we'll add the ring as an avatar in Marvelous Designer. We then create a rectangle in the 2D view at 1300 by 700 mm the approximate size of our towel. Next we create two splits going lengthwise and use the fold tool to fold both sides. At this point we can also use the remeshing tool to achieve a cleaner topology. There's a few adjustments to the simulation properties. We'll put these in the video notes. The next step is to position the pattern through the ring and run the simulation. The idea at this point is to obtain general forms with relatively low topology. To create the trim for the towel, we first offset an internal line at either end of the towel and proceed to cut and sew those pieces together. I'll speed up the video at this point where we tweak the towel until we're happy with the folds. Once we're happy with the general form and folds, we can go ahead and increase the polygon count of the mesh by reducing the particle distance. A lower particle distance allows us to have more complex and defined details. From this point on, the idea is to play around with the mesh, pulling parts around until the desired folds are achieved. We export the pattern as thin separate objects, which will give us more control in later stages. Now that we have our general shape for the towel, the next step is to take it into ZBrush to add further detail and make control tweaks. It's a good idea to enable layer recording, which allows us to store all the brush stroke actions so we can reduce or exaggerate their effect at a later stage if needed. Using the move brush we're able to make further tweaks. In this case we'll use the move brush on the folded insides of the towel which we want to move up to be hidden from view. Slight nudges with the move tool to the overall towel also help to add a bit of chaos to the silhouette. At this stage using the damn standard brush, we're able to have more complex details such as creases and imperfections. We'll show some of the sculpting where we add the creases, but we've cut quite a lot out of the video here as it can be tedious to watch.
Once satisfied with the detailing, we'll go ahead and export the towel trim, ensuring that the texture coordinates are ticked. Next we import both the towel and the ring into 3D Studio Max and add a shell modifier, which adds thickness to the mesh. Add a turbo smooth and repeat this with slightly lower parameters on the trim. We found some suitable carpet textures in Substance 3D's Community Asset Library that we can adapt to look like fibres that are typically seen on towels. If you're not already familiar with Substance's texture library, we've added a link to the video description as it's a fantastic resource. It's also important to note that in order to achieve realistic results, the textures you use must be high resolution, at least 8K. To create the horizontal stripe grooves which feature on the reference images, we need to modify the diffuse and displacement textures. We created a pattern of black lines at the bottom of the diffuse texture, adding chaos to the lines using the liquidate tool, and applying a Gaussian blur to get a softer fall off on the edges. To texture the stripes we import a cotton texture and use a mask to apply it to where we create the black stripes. We can then colour match using a hue saturation adjustment layer to match the reference image. The blood stripes layer we created earlier is then used behind the stripes to create the illusion of extra depth. We now open the displacement texture and copy over the stripes layer from the diffuse, ensuring it's placed in the exact same position. Since this is a displacement map, the aim here is to push out those grooves from the mesh. White areas will be convex and black areas will be concave. To do this we duplicate the stripes layer, select the stripes, modify the selection and invert it to white. Applying a levels adjustment layer allows us to further control the fall off. For the base towel material, we'll start by creating a corona material and linking up the diffuse texture map. At this point we're going to display the diffuse texture in the viewport to gauge its scale. Apply an unwrap UVW modifier below the shell modifier. Inside the UVW editor we select the UVs which were initially generated in Marvelous Designer and we'll scale them down until the stripes are visible in the viewport. The aim here is to get the scale right and to align the stripes with the bottom of the towel base and have them sit next to the trim. Here we split off half the UVs in order to align the stripes on the opposite side of the towel. As the base texture is tileable and doesn't contain any unique features where the split is made, we don't have to worry about a seam appearing in that area.
To better gauge the look of the material, we can start running the Corona Interactive Renderer as we tweak the material parameters. The scene we're using is a simple studio-like setup and uses a number of targeted Corona lights. Next, we'll link up the texture maps to their respective slots and dial in the parameters whilst ensuring to frequently refer back to our reference photography. We'll speed the video up here whilst we adjust the materials. At this point, with just the base textures in place, the tower lacks any sort of imperfections and higher frequency creases. In order to add more realism, we can start to incorporate additional grunge, dirt and crease masks and combine them into our base textures. For the displacement, we create a composite node to combine the base displacement texture with a grunge mask to break up the look of the fibres. We then repeat the process with a normal channel by blending in a crease texture. Subtleness is the key here. To break up the diffuse texture, we create a composite node and plug in a noise map with slightly darker and lighter tones. Next we create a fall off node which is a key ingredient in creating realistic looking fabrics. To give the towel a softer appearance, we can dial in some subsurface scattering. This lightens up the darker shadowy areas in the fibres and gives them a more translucent appearance, closer to how a thread actually looks in reality. For the trim, duplicate the base towel material network. We'll tweak this later. Repeat the UV mapping process and scale down the UVs. Then, we'll incorporate a cotton texture into the diffuse and bump, and remove the unnecessary texture maps which we use for the base of the towel.
Here we make small adjustments to the UV map and increase the thickness of the shell. Going into the shell modifier properties, we can adjust how the texture wraps around the thickness of the seams. Changing edge mapping to interpolate allows us to fix the distortion. We make further adjustments to the mesh by using the shift sculpt brush. Small subtle nudges can help us achieve a more interesting looking silhouette. Further minor tweaks are made to the texture placement to get a more appealing look. Adding fur allows us to push the realism further by giving an appearance of stray fibres scattered across the towel. To create these we first duplicate the towel body Remove the inner shell and collapse the modifiers so we're left with a clean outer layer of mesh. We can now generate the fur on top of this mesh. Once the fur is generated, we'll adjust the parameters. We make the fibres small, subtle and similar in colour to the towel body so as not to stand out too much. Finally we head over to the object properties and untick the following controls so that the mesh itself is hidden and only the fibres are visible. Snapping back the mesh pops it back into place, overlaying the original mesh with the newly generated fibres. And that's the end of the process, one final render and that's your realistic hanging towel created.